So here's going to be a quick little guide on setting up, um, so here's going to be a quick little guide on getting your data back if you have a bad hard drive using DD Rescue. Now this definitely is not perfect in the BR&R of data recovery, but it is a good quick start if you have a bad hard drive that's starting to act up. And generally this only really fixes some acting up data. So some causes and ways to know if this is acting up is if you see a slowdown in copying speeds here, so you can see how it went from a relatively fast to here, even though it's copying the same file type. Um, anything saying Windows or your OS has detected a hard drive problem, that. You can also tell using smart data on a drive if you want to use something to test it, such as Crystal Disk Info. But right now, th this is definitely a very strong indicator. I also know it is a bad hard drive. And I can see that this is the bad drive right here. It's my D drive. I also have a separate boot drive in this case here. So let's get into fixing it. Generally, when a hard drive fails, there's only a few bad parts to it. It has a ton of sectors, and one or two of them is normally bad. And most cloning programs will completely fail if it tries to read data and it says, no, I don't have it. And that's where a program called DD Rescue comes in handy. DD Rescue knows that bad sectors exist and it will um, go around them and try to get as most of the data as it can around the bad sectors. Now, yes, you will still lose normally a couple of megabytes of data, but it's a lot better than most other programs that would just completely fail if it detects any problem. So let's get into creating this. So in order to finish this, um, you're going to need a few things. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a Linux distribution. DD Rescue unfortunately only runs on Linux. While it might be possible to run a virtual machine, it's much easier to just run on a live disk. You're going to need a USB drive, and you're going to need something called Ruffus to put it on there. So I'm going to go download um, Ubuntu here. You can quickly just go to download and download the latest version. Um, any like this really works. Ubuntu is just simple, easy to use, and pretty common. I'm going to just download it. Click take me to the download. The other program I'm going to want is called Ruffus. You can use other programs to do this, but Ruffus is pretty nice because it's really easy to use. Um, on Linux, Mac OS X, you can use something called DD. There's quite a few guides out there about how exactly to do it. Um, Ubuntu is a relatively big file. It's about a little bit over a gig, so it will take a bit to download. So now that Ruffus is downloaded, you have to run it as an administrator. And now you just want to point it to your USB drive and put a 4 gig USB stick in. You want to point it to your ISO file here. And then just tell it to start. And it will take a couple minutes if it gives you some prompt to say just hit OK, all the defaults will work fine. It will delete all the data on your USB drive. And now that it's finished, we can close this here. And then you'll want to reboot your system and boot onto the new USB drive. Now when it comes to booting into a USB drive, it depends on your system. Most will tell you in the manual on what key. I think most Dell systems, it's F12. This system happens to be F8 to determine a different boot drive. And now you're faced with the boot menu. You want to select a UEFI option if you have one. Sometimes they won't boot into it because of something called Secure Boot, which you have to go disabled. Most of the time, select the UEFI option if you can. If you can't, um, you want to try it without installing this way. It will not touch any files on your disk unless you specifically tell it to do so. I'm going to boot it into Ubuntu and I want to find the bad drive. So the easy way to do that is to open up a program called Disks. And I can see my bad drive here. And what matters the most is its device letter slash dev slash SDA. It's assigned every time it boot. So if you reboot it, it may be different. So um, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to search up um, software and updates because we need to install DD Rescue, the software that will pull the data off. So just check this here, hit close, and then reload. And this will take a minute or two depending on the speed of your network and some other things. And then while this is going, we can open up the terminal and find this is a external hard drive I've added to put the files on. You can also put it on the boot driver of the other system, but Windows 10 seems to want to be picky and not want to boot correctly in Linux for whatever reason. So we're going to make a folder and call it HGD image. So now we need to open up the terminal. Um, and then we're going to do sudo apt install gdd rescue. And that will install it. Take a second or two. And now we can actually run the command. So we want to run it as sudo, so it has full access. 
dd rescue, you can hit tabbed auto complete or type it all the way out. Dash D for direct access um, to it, so it can bypass the standard kernel drive system, which just helps it get its data better. Dash R3, which will um, tell it how many times to try the data again, which you want it to be about three works right for most drives. And then you want the drive letter, so in this case, slash dev slash SDA. Um, and then you want the location of where the image file will go. So you can just type, the easy way is to just drag the image from the file. So you're gonna get it here. And then it will just give you a folder. So you're gonna have to do a slash and we're gonna call it um, drive.img um, here. And then what you wanna do is it will take a second file and this one's gonna be a log file. And what this log file will let you do is if it stops halfway through, you can reuse the log file. So I can call it drive.log. And then you hit enter, and it's going to start going. And you can see the um, information here for a info. Basically tells you what it's currently doing. So, so right here, um, you can see it'll show you how much data it's currently pulled off. So it's about 1.4 gigs right now. It's going pretty fast. Um, the input and output position on the drive, um, error size and how many errors it has, how long it's been running, how long since the successful read. Sometimes it just takes forever. You can change its max read time in other settings, but this is kind of the, it's going to work pretty well. And how much, how quickly it's pulling data off. And now DD Rescue has been running overnight, so about 11.1 .1 hours here. And you can see it's rescued about 169 gigs worth of data and its error size is 176 megs with 378 errors on different blocks. If you give it some more time, it will slowly get more data and you can see the current rate that it's getting data is very slow, so like half a kilobyte a second. And it's trying to get every little chunk of data that it can. And depending on the drive and how its errors are and the whole thing and the speed, it could easily take almost a week sometimes with very bad drives could also just take an hour or two. This drive here I'm estimating will take, I don't know, maybe another five hours max. So I let the program run for about 16 hours and it got everything but about 31 megabytes of files here. If I go to the folder where the IOs are, I get a drive.img file here, which is 160 odd gigs. And then I also get a DD log file, which is quite small. And really, this is all it contains. It tells you where all the bad sectors are, and no status, and everything. What this lets you do is if I quit out of it, like I did here, I can run it again, and it's going to continue from exactly where it runs off. Most cloning programs can't do this at all, but this one's perfectly happy about doing that. Um, you should continue it until it's fully done and then only use this image. You also should make a copy of the image before you touch the image at all. Um, just so that if you do something to the copy, you always have that image and you never have to touch the original drive again, which, because most failing hard drives, if you touch them, the chance of getting data off of them will slowly go down. So now we're going to try to get the data off of it by rebooting into Windows and mounting the drive image. So now let's get into some basic data recovery. So this is the files we have left in bad when we're back in the Windows. So I'm going to try melting it in Windows, and it's going to say it's corrupted because those bytes are missing. But that doesn't completely stop you, so we could do a few more things. I have 7-zip on here, and we're going to extract it now. Um, and now it's going to take a bit of time, but it's going to extract the image, and I'm going to get in here, I'm going to get two files. One's called basic data partition. I'm going to get one file for every partition. This guy has the basic partition. So there's a Microsoft Reserve partition. It's going to say it's corrupted too. I don't know if it's finished it. It makes all the sizes here before it actually finishes doing it and then a basic data partition, which it's probably gonna try to open, but it's gonna fail because it's in use. This guy has Microsoft's volume data. None of your files are on it. This one actually has the data. So once this guy finishes, we're gonna take a look and see if we can read any of your files in there. And now that partition has been extracted for both of them. So if I try to mount it again, it's gonna still say it's corrupted. This guy might mount, but it doesn't either. So now 7-zip, we can extract files to basic data partition here. And we're going to see the exact same thing. And if we open it, here we go. Here are our files. So, and this will take a while to complete because it's pulling off all the files. But that's a simple guide to getting all your files off of a failing drive. It's not going to work for every drive in every situation, but should help you in some. So, thanks for watching and subscribe for more.